So good morning everybody, uh, I'm Neelakshi Suryanarayan from the University of Delhi and uh, the present paper is actually a continuation of an ongoing project which Dr. Tatiana Larana and I have been doing which is studying the impact of culture on communicative styles and applying this framework that Dr. Tatiana just uh, enumerated before us. In our earlier joint papers, we attempted to highlight the level of formality and informality in <coughs> Indian and British Englishes while addressing strangers, family members and colleagues at work. And our research showed that due to differences in socio-cultural organization and cultural values of uh, Indian style on the one hand is more formal compared to the British and on the other hand it is more intimate. So in this paper, I decided to focus on another characteristic of communicative style, which is directness and indirectness. So without going into too many theoretical details, I will demonstrate the results of the research conducted on speech act of request in Indian English. So as we all know, request is an important speech act which initiates a large number of interactions in our daily lives. It comprises an element of contact between a speaker and a hearer and expresses a specific intention of the speaker. It can be described as an attempt to influence the hearer either to perform a certain action or refrain from carrying it out. This intention of making someone else perform an action clearly corresponds to Searle's concept of directives. A uh, request is a speech act which also functions as an imposition on the freedom of the receiver and it appears to the recipient as sometimes demanding and sometimes intrusive. So the recipient may not like to lose face by refusing the request or he she might not like to do the thing asked for. On the other hand, the requester may also feel insecure about exposing a need and refusing and facing refusal. Thus a request is face threatening in both the requester, for both the requester and the receiver of the request. However, various studies in cross-cultural pragmatics show that the degree of threat in the speech act of request varies across cultures. In some cultures, we may assume that it is not even thought of as a phrase threatening act and an example of which can be Indian communicative culture. To prove this hypothesis, the present empirical piece of research was conducted on English and Hindi speaking Indian students of Delhi University. I took some of my students and some others from another stream. So the aim of the study was to investigate the role of cultural specificities in their requests in English. Investigating this role, we attempted to find answers to the following questions. What communicative strategies are preferred by Indian speakers of English? What language tools do Indian speakers of uh, English use to make a request? How can the revealed characteristics be explained through culture? And how do they impact the communicative style? So the subjects are around 60 postgraduate bilingual students of Delhi University coming from different streams and they belong to the age group of 21 to about 23 years. Their mother tongue is Hindi in most cases, that is they speak Hindi at home, but they speak both Hindi and English in the university among peers, amongst peers and friends. Uh, the data was collected through questionnaires consisting of several situations. At present, however, we will just take up three of them. The first two situations are symmetrical with different levels of imposition. As you can see, it is request to borrow a pen or a pencil in class. The second one is request to borrow some money in the canteen. And one is symmetrical situation, which is requesting the teacher for some more time to submit an assignment. So for the present research, our, uh, the theory was being derived mainly from, as you can see, uh, the theories of uh, Searle, Bloom, Kulka, the politeness theory of Leach, Brown and Davidson, and the theoretical framework of culture specific communicative styles that was enumerated earlier also. Uh, but we analyzed the examples adhering to the parameters put forward by Bloom and Kulka, which is directness, perspective, face features, downgraders and upgraders, and supportive moves. Uh, the study revealed that Indian speakers, Indian English speakers mostly tend to prefer direct request forms both in the symmetrical and asymmetrical situations and here are some of our results. Situation 1 which was a request to borrow a pen 
uh, it really contrary to our expectations we found that imperative form was not the dominant form. So, you can see that it was used only by 25 percent of the uh, students in most cases with the word please before the imperative and please actually is not so much used in Indian culture it is something that we have borrowed now from the English and most people use it just to really fortify their request. So, here we have examples like please give me your pen oi you have two pens yeah just oi here is just another word please give me one give me your pencil will you etc. Non conventional indirect requests constituted 69 percent. So, people asked anybody with extra pen or oh, do you have a pen who has an extra pen got a pen conventionally indirect request was made only by 6 percent of the people can you please lend me a pencil and the more polite form of could you please give me a pencil was maybe used by just one person. Uh, so, uh, let me come down to uh, I would like to actually make this uh, point that though formally these requests are interrogative if we come to that point anybody got a pen can uh, uh, anybody with an extra pen who has an extra pen that these requests are interrogative, but they are perceived by the hearers almost as a demand and there is no doubt or hesitation in this question. The possibility that the hearer will comply with the act and the request will be fulfilled is actually just taken for granted. So, thus one may say this, that this so called non conventional indirect request uh, are indirect by their form, but they are quite direct pragmatically in this particular uh, situation. Uh, moving to situation 2 which was request to borrow some money uh, which is actually of course, the, this is uh, more uh, the cost of this request is more significant. Nevertheless, the most of these requests were again very direct. Yeah, so, we can see that the imperative form was used by 77 percent again with you know some explanation well we have examples like oh give me 10 bucks buddy yar you pay today yar is the Indian word for uh, friend which is used in that very intimate manner. We had the, the imperative plus explanation yar I am feeling hungry give me some money hey I forgot my wallet you pay shit I forgot my wallet please give me some money yeah you pay today brother you pay today and I will pay tomorrow and one person even had the audacity to say it is my birthday today. So, you treat me you know which of course, is understood that it was really not his birthday. So, non conventional direct requests were made by 12 percent the treat is on you today, today you are feeding me ok. Indirect requests were made by only I mean 11 percent again can you lend me some money for lunch that was mainly used again there were no answer no nobody using could you please lend me some money can I please request that you you know pay for me today I have forgotten my wallet. So, it was again very very direct. So, we see that in symmetrical situations Indian speakers of English tend to request directly even when the cost of imposition is quite high. Uh, they hardly use markers of politeness and they demonstrate markers of solidarity here you know because of this collectivist culture that we belong to that you tend to make even a person on the street your brother your sister or your aunt. Uh, moving to situation 3 this was requesting the teacher to give more time to submit the assignment differed from the other two by power distance the relations between interlocutors are is symmetrical and the situation itself is of a more threatening form you know. But nevertheless contrary to our expectations the use of direct request was again significantly high and mainly the imperative form was used please give me some time ok. Declarative speaker oriented requests I need some more time performative verbs ma'am I request you to extend my submission deadline. I would like to explain here that this word ma'am I think is you know quite archaic maybe in British culture, but for us uh, it is a form of respect and specially in the classroom the, the uh, students will not address you as anything else but ma'am and sir. So, ma'am I request you to extend my submission deadline indirect request was made by 15 percent of the students out of which questions with can constituted 10 percent can I submit late can I please get some more time declarative sentences with elaborative politeness were only 5 percent which is I will really appreciate some more time it would be kind of you 
if you allow me a few more days for my assignment, etc. And a blunt statement also were made. Yeah, I'll give it tomorrow, please, ma'am, tomorrow or the day after. So uh, when we talk of, uh, uh, I know I'd like to just come to another very, uh, uh, some very unique kind of uh, answers that we found, which is excuse is an imperative. So this is a very typical in Indian, you know, situation when you can sort of involve your teacher in some of the what you have gone through. So he says, ma'am, I was sick last week, two more days, please. I was too busy at my home, I'll submit it in two days. And also the audacity to say that I was watching an IPL match. IPL is a very, is a cricket match which takes up most of our time. So <laughs> cricket being a very popular sport. So yesterday I was watching the IPL match, please give me one more day. So, uh, and again, uh, Another one, good morning, sir. Actually, I was suffering from fever. That's why I'm late in the submitting my assignment. Please support me and try to understand my problem, sir. So what we, here I would like to say that what Bloom Kulka calls supportive move is actually an emotional blackmail, you know, because if the hearer does not comply with the request, he can be looked upon as being rather insensitive, mean, and maybe even cruel. So, and another, a very unique example, ma'am, I have not completed your assignment. In fact, nobody else has completed it in the class. So please take it next time. So here is a, you know, to involve others, that not just me, but others. So again, a very kind of typical feature of collectivist culture. So as we can see, um, in asymmetrical situations, Indian speakers of English tend to be direct. Instead of softening a request, they sometimes intensify it, giving it the form of an ardent appeal, and the burden of the request falls on the hearer. Thus, our study reveals that cultural transfer uh, it has a significant role in the speech, of, uh, speech act of requesting used by speakers of Indian English. Because of direct transfer from their own sociolinguistic and sociocultural background, the Indian speakers of uh, English mostly use direct requests in speech, which tends to make their requests rather blunt and abrupt. So concluding in a way, in view of the above speech act, request is not so threatening in the Indian context as solidarity, uh, support, interdependence are some of the salient features of collectivist Indian culture. As shown in situation two, where the request for money involved considerable face threat, the speakers used positive politeness strategies rather than negative through the use of such address forms as yar, friend, buddy, brother, etc. In situation three, they appealed for the understanding of the teacher, thereby trying to include her, him in their family and personal problems. In other cases, they just placed the facts before the teacher, taking his, her understanding for granted. So these strategies make the communicative style of Indian English speakers using the terms proposed by Tatiana as contact, direct, imposing, speaker oriented. Here I mean the, that the interests of the speaker are dominant, while the style of British English uh, as numerous studies have shown is distant, indirect, non-imposing and mostly hearer oriented. Uh, thus, this confirms again that culture is a context of communication which shapes the features of a particular communicative style and my data also confirm the relative nature of communicative styles. Okay, so I've just tried to draw a little uh, table again, uh, British English distant, Indian is contact, direct, uh, sorry I think there's some uh, not indirect and that there it is direct, non-imposing, imposing, hearer oriented and speaker oriented. Uh, taking into account the results of numerous studies of speak at, uh, speech act of request in other cultures including British and Russian and ethnographic observation through my own multicultural experience. I am a teacher of Russian language to Indian bilingual students who speak English and Hindi. I have made an attempt to show this uh, relativity in a broader perspective. Uh, British English can be characterized in the given context as most distant, indirect and non-imposing due to the prevalent cultural values. Hindi is on the other extreme of the scale. Requests in Hindi are extremely direct, which as pointed earlier has an impact on Indian English. 
Russian speakers who also belonging to a collectivist culture but with clear traces of individualism stand somewhere in between using direct and indirect communicative strategies. As compared to the British, they are less indirect but not as direct as speakers of Indian English and Hindi. So in the end, I wish to point out that this is just a limited study actually. However, we, and it was a rough, it's a rough sketch of our future research and we intend to undertake deeper research of this aspect in the framework of the INADA project. So I thank you for your attention.